Hi, Hugo Reed. I have a fun nonfiction book for you today. It is called, What If You Had Animal Hair? Whoa, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? It has all different kinds of animal hair inside. This book is by Sandra Markle, and it's illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Sandra Markle has a lot of good nonfiction books. She's a good author to look for. What if you had animal hair? What if one day when you woke up, the hair on your head wasn't yours? What if overnight a wild animal's hair grew in instead? Polar bears. <clears throat> Excuse me. A polar bear has a double coat of hair to keep it warm. There's a woolly undercoat close to the bear's skin. Above that is a top coat made of six inch long stiff oil coated hairs. A polar bear's hair looks as white as arctic snow because the top coat hairs are hollow and clear. They reflect the light just like the snow. Six inches is pretty long. That's probably from about there to there. That's a pretty long hair when you, for a bear, I think. So they have two coats. And then it always has some little facts down here. It says fact. Each May or June, a polar bear sheds its hair and grows a new coat in less than a month. Wow. So look, it's showing somebody if we pretended that they had polar bear hair over here. It says, if you had polar bear hair on your head, you could play outdoors in the cold, wet weather and never need a hat. What's next? Reindeer. A reindeer has a double coat too. It also has a lot of hair, as many as 5,000 outer hairs per square inch of skin. Whoa, that's an inch is like that big. So a square inch, they could have 5,000, 5,000 hairs, woo. Let's see, each long stiff outer hair has a hollow core. These hairs trap air. In addition to keeping the reindeer warm, the hair helps the heavy animal float in the water. Fact, a reindeer's hollow hairs keep its body heat from escaping. In fact, if a reindeer lies on the ground, the snow under it doesn't melt. Wow, so it not only protects the body from the cold, but it would protect the things under from the body heat. If the snow's not melting when it lays on it, that would mean it's not the snow is not feeling the warmth of the body heat of the reindeer. So it has insulation. If you had reindeer hair, swimming would always be easy, even, even in the roughest of waters. It's just making her float, isn't it? A musk ox. A musk ox has the longest hair of any wild animal. Some hairs are as long as two feet. Its shaggy coat hangs down to its hooves. This coat is also double thick and so tough it acts like a suit of armor. Fact, each spring a musk ox sheds its woolly undercoat as much as seven pounds of hair. You can see it looking shaggy in that picture where it's shedding its hair. If you had musk, musk ox hair, you could play outside day or night in winter or summer without worrying about frostbite, sunburn, or bug bites. That would be kind of nice. But I don't know about seven pounds of hair to carry around. That's heavy. And orcs. A smitter horned oryx. I should have looked that one up, you guys. I'm not sure if I said that right has hair that is just right for its African desert home. The oryx's pale colored coat reflects sunlight and keeps it from overheating. The hairs are also so short that any cool breeze easily reaches its skin. Fact, oryx calves are born with solid yellow coats. They develop distinctive markings and pale white and red coats as they grow up. So there's a calf. If they live in the desert, 
Do you think that pale yellow would help camouflage them from enemies when they're younger? I think it would. If you had scimitar horn oryx hair, you'd never need a comb or a brush. Even if you rolled on the ground, your hair would be too short to tangle or collect dirt. So here's a boy with oryx hair. They put horns on them too a lot, don't they, if the animal has horns? A lion. A male lion has a mane, long, thick hair on the back of its head, neck, and shoulders. When it comes to having a mane, size matters. Scientists learn that female lions, called lionesses, prefer males with big manes. That could be because the healthiest males usually have the largest manes. Fact, a lion's mane needs regular cleaning and grooming. Luckily, a group of lions called a pride will groom one another. These big cats have a built-in comb. They're rough tongues. There you can see it. Where is licking the other one and it's grooming it. Let's see what it says about if you had it. If you had a lion's mane, you'd stand out in a crowd. You'd look big and bold. It'd make your head look a lot bigger, wouldn't it? Zebra. A zebra's hair grows in black and white stripes. These stripes help it stay safe. Whether standing still or running, zebras usually stick together in a herd. Seeing so many stripes confuses hunters, such as lions and hyenas. Fact, a zebra's hair shows if it's healthy or sick. The short hair on a healthy zebra mane stands straight up. A sick zebra's mane flops over to the side. So see, here's its mane and it's standing straight up. It's not falling. Like on a horse, I think those are softer hairs and they fall over. But look, those are standing straight up and it looks like here pretty much too. See how they're standing up? You can kind of see that. If you had zebra hair, you wouldn't have to work at being one of a kind. Each zebra has a stripe pattern that is completely unique. So every single zebra stripes are just a little bit different. They're unique. Three-toed sloth. The three-toed sloth's hair often looks green because little plants called algae grow all over it. Sloths live in damp rainforests and rarely move, making their bodies a good place for algae to live. However, having green hair isn't a bad thing. Green hair helps the sloths blend into their homes in the treetops and hide from predators such as jaguars and harpy eagles. Fact, three-toed sloths spend most of their lives upside down, so their hair grows differently than other hairy animals. When a three-toed sloth hangs upside down, its hair falls over its body. So, even upside down, the sloth's hair keeps the skin dry when it rains. There, it's showing it upside down. If you had three-toed sloth hair, you'd never be alone. Because of the algae, your hair would be home to many different kinds of harmless insects. Ooh, I don't know about that. What do you think? Would you like to have bugs growing in your hair? Arctic fox. An arctic fox hair is snow white in the winter. Each hair is also fat helping make its coat thick and warm. As the days grow longer and heat up, an arctic fox sheds its wintertime hair and grows a new brown coat. Now each hair is skinny, helping make its coat thin and keeping the fox from overheating. Besides staying comfortable, changing its coat keeps an arctic fox perfectly colored to sneak up on prey such as lemmings and voles. So when it's snowy, it has white fur, and when it's not, it gets a little bit browner, it sounds like. Fat. When getting ready for winter, Arctic foxes also grow long hair between their toes and on the soles of their feet. Their furry feet help them run on the ice without slipping. Wow, that's pretty handy, isn't it? It's like built-in boots. Look at this girl. If you had arctic fox hair, you'd never get tired of your hair color because it would change with the seasons. First it would be white, then it would be brown, right? 
a giant pangolin. I thought this one was interesting because I haven't heard of these animals before. A giant pangolin's body is covered with scales which consist of the same substance as hair. Like hair, the scales are made of tough keratin and grow out of the skin. A giant pangolin scales also start small and grow longer until at last they fall out. New scales grow to replace the ones that are lost. Look at this, this is on the fact. The back edges of the giant pangolin scale-like hairs are razor sharp. So if it's attacked, a giant pangolin just curls up and stays safe. So it's sort of like an armadillo, isn't it? Look at this boy with his pangolin hair. If you had a giant pangolin scales, you wouldn't need to put on a bike to ride, on a helmet to ride your bike. you just have a tough head, wouldn't you? Porcupine. A porcupine has a normal coat, but it also has special hairs too, called quills. Quills are stiff needle-like hairs. If attacked, barbs on the end of each quill poke into the enemy's skin. Then, even when they separate, the porcupine's quills stay stuck in the enemy. Here's our fact picture. Fact, a porcupine's skin gives off a fatty substance that coats each quill. This fatty substance contains a germ-killing chemical. So, if a porcupine accidentally pokes itself, it won't get an infection. Wow, that's pretty amazing. If you had a porcupine's quills, bullies would never bother you. Look, this bully got poked in the bottom. Ouch, ouch, ouch. A star-nosed mole. Wow, look at that. That's its nose. Isn't that crazy? I can see why it's called a star-nosed mole. A star-nosed mole's hair, unlike most animal hair, can lie flat in any direction. Pushed forward, sideways, or straight back, its hair will never stick up. It will always fly, lie flat against its body. This lets a star-nosed mole slip easily through its underground tunnels, whether it's going forward or backing up. Fact. So here's our little fact picture. It's kind of hard to see because it is so dark. I think the other one is easier. And it's talking about their claws, which you can see, I think, better in this picture. A star-nosed mole has comb-like claws to spread through its hair. That makes its coat waterproof. That's important since it lives in damp tunnels. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it goes so deep that it would be damp down in the dirt. So when it can spread that oil through its hair with its claws, it helps it stay waterproof. If you had star-nosed mole hair, your hair would stay put in whatever direction you comb it. Be perfect for crazy hair day, wouldn't it? Wild animal hair could be cool for a while, but if you don't use your hair to stay afloat or confuse predators, you don't need your hair to change with the seasons, be a helmet, or lie flat in every direction. And you'll never defend yourself with your hair no matter what. So, if you could keep wild animal hair for more than a day, which kind would be right for you? What kind of those, all those we talked about, do you think you'd like to have? Luckily, you don't have to choose. The hair that grows on the top of your head may look wild from time to time, but it will always be people hair. It will be what you need to protect your head from the heat, chills, and bumps and make your body and make you look your best when it's clean and brushed. And everybody's taking care of their hair. And that is the end. Talks about who took the photos. So animal hair. Good one. I hope you have a great crazy hair day coming up later this month. See you later. Bye-bye.